you now rock with the best. Are you having a hard time with math? Need a little help when well, you came to the right place? Somebody help me with this math! Personalized math tutoring is the solution. Fort Bend Tutoring, Mr. Witt. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's lesson is about solving one-step linear equations. That's right. How to solve a simple one-step equation. That's what we're going to focus on today. So this is going to be the foundation of your algebra, ladies and gentlemen, as you are going to be perfecting the art of isolating the variable. That's right. You always are solving for one positive variable. All right. So you always want that symbol, that letter to be isolated by itself. You want it on one side of the equal sign. It doesn't matter whether you solve for your variable always on the left hand side or on the right hand side, but you do want to have it by itself. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today especially in those equations that only need one step in order to, for you to solve it. All right, so let's take a look at those. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, number one, we have x minus 18 equals to negative 13. And in this equation, we're going to be using the addition property of equality. That is the addition property of equality. Bottom line, you're going to be using the opposite operation in most of these equations that we solve today in order to isolate the variable, in order to get that variable by itself. So what do I need to do here? I'm going to use what is called the additive inverse or the opposite of negative 18, which is positive 18. So you could read this as x minus 18 equals to negative 13, or you can look at it as x plus negative 18 equals to negative 13. Either way, let's use the opposite of this negative 18, which is a positive. So I'm going to be adding 18 to both sides of the equal sign. So here I have me adding 18 to both sides of the equal sign. And so now on the left side of my equation, I'll be able to cancel out those 18s because a negative 18 and a positive 18, those being additive inverses, when you combine those, they always cancel out. Another name for additive inverse is opposite, ladies and gentlemen. So when you have these opposite numbers combining, you just cancel them out because they equal to zero. Yeah. So now let's bring down our variable X. We'll have x equals 2, and over here to the right, we have unlike signs. Remember that unlike signs subtract, and you always keep the sign of the largest number. So with a negative 13 and a positive 18, my answer is going to be positive because the largest number is positive. Here, that 18 is positive, whereas the smaller number 13 is negative. So I'll end up with a positive 5 as my result. Unlike signs subtract, and that's going to be my result, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. All right. So once again, we started out with x minus 18 equals to negative 13. I use the opposite operation of subtraction, which is addition, in order to solve this. Another way to look at it is, once again, I use the opposite sign of negative 18. So that'd be positive 18, and I did that to both sides. When using the addition property of equality, ladies and gentlemen, what you do to the left side of the equation must be done to the right side of the equation in order to keep balance. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to our next equation, shall we? All right, here we have 8 plus y equals to 12. So once again, I always want to get the variable by itself. I want one positive y. So what I'll be doing is I'll be observing what's going on on that particular side of the equation. In other words, what else is going on on the same side of the equation where my variable is? I want y by itself, but here I have this positive 8. So using the additive inverse, what's the opposite of 8? Well, it's a negative 8. So in this case, I'll be using the subtraction property of equality because I'll be subtracting 8 to both sides of the equal sign. So notice how I'm subtracting 8 to the left side of the equal sign as well as subtracting 8 on the right side of the equal sign. Okay, well, once I've done that, once again, you have these additive inverses, these opposites, and they will cancel out mm -hmm. every time. So anytime I'm adding opposites, when you're going to combine them, they'll cancel out because that equals a zero. So I'll be bringing down my y and always try to write from left to right, ladies and gentlemen. That's a good practice. We read in English from left to right, so therefore let us write our math from left to right as well. So I have y equals to 12 minus 8, which equals to 4. And that's going to be the solution to this problem. Once again, we use the subtraction property of equality in order to isolate our variable. We 
always know we're done when you have one of whatever variable that is, and in this case it's y, equaling to our answer here, in this case it's four. You can always check your result by plugging your response back into the equation. For instance, I can rewrite this original problem as eight plus four, substituting in my answer for y, and checking to see that the left side equals to the right side. Well, eight plus four does equal to 12, so that proves that my answer is correct because when I replace my variable y with four, I ended up with the correct answer, my left side equaling to my right side. That being a true statement, I know my answer is correct and we can move on to our next problem, ladies and gentlemen. All right, here we have number three, three x equals to 51. 3x equals to 51. And here, notice, ladies and gentlemen, that we have a number in front of the variable. Anytime you have a number in front of your variable, that's called a coefficient. The coefficient is always the number in front of the variable, and that number is always multiplying against the variable itself. So whenever you see a number in front of a variable, already know that that operation is multiplication. So this is three times x equals to 51. You will normally just say it's three x equals to 51, but know that three is always multiplying on that variable. Whatever number's in front of the variable is multiplying against it. All right, so keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be using the opposite operation again in order to solve this. Since three is multiplying on our variable, we'll need the opposite operation of division in order to get it by itself. So we'll show our division, ladies and gentlemen, using the division property of equality by using a division symbol here, all right? In other words, a fraction. I'll be dividing both sides by three, and it'll look like a fraction because anytime you have it the exact same number over itself, you'll end up with x being isolated by itself. So I now have x equals to 51 divided by three, which is 17, and this is gonna be my final answer right here. All right. Done and done, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so that completes problem number three. So let's check out the next one. In problem number four, I have negative n equals to 10. Anytime you see a negative sign in front of a variable, that means that that negative is acting as negative one times the variable n in this case, which will equal to 10. So because I'm multiplying by negative one, I could use the opposite operation, which is division. This is called using the division property of equality. So the division property of equality allows me to divide both sides by the number in front of the variable. In this case, that would be negative one. So here I can show that by dividing both sides by negative one. And this is actually my preferred way to solve this problem. Here, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so I'll end up with a positive n. Once again, I'm always trying to solve for a positive one of whatever variable I have in the equation. And then a positive divided by a negative is a negative, and 10 divided by one is 10, so that gives me a result of negative 10 as my answer. So that's using the division property of equality. I can also solve this using the multiplication property of equality as well. So let's look at that scenario. Here, if I start out with that same equation of negative n equals to 10, because a negative times a negative is a positive, I can use the multiplication principle of equality or the multiplication property of equality, depending on the text that you're using. You'll have, in this case, a negative times negative n equals to negative times 10. And if you just show a negative sign in front of a set of parentheses, that's the same as multiplying by negative one. So if you wanna write your negative one during this step, you can, but my preference is to obviously not write the negative one. So the opposite, which is another way of looking at the negative sign, of negative n is a positive n. So that's what I end up with there. So a negative times a negative is a positive. That gives me a positive one of my variable, which is what I want. And here, the opposite of 10, or the negative one times 10, gives me a result of negative 10. And once again, I end up with that same result. So the first way I solved problem number four was using the division property of equality. The second way I solved problem number four was to use the multiplication property of equality. Either way would be correct, ladies and gentlemen. As you see here in our red boxes, we end up with the same result. So it's up to you which way you wanna solve this. Okay, let's move on to the next problem, ladies and gentlemen. That was problem number four. So once again, our purpose today is just to look at equations that can be solved in one step. 
and what that one step should and could be. All right, let's check out number five. Here I have x over five, or you could say x divided by five, which equals to negative six. In a situation like this, what we can do is you can just simply multiply both sides by that denominator, ladies and gentlemen. So notice that I have a denominator here of five, so I can multiply both sides by that denominator in order to isolate my variable to get it by itself. So it'll look like this when I set it up. It'll have five times x over five equals to five times negative six. Anytime I'm multiplying or dividing an equation by a number using either the multiplication property of equality or the division property of equality, you must multiply that same value to each and every term in your equation. So here, five times x over five, the fives will cancel out because you could look at that as five over one times x over five. Your fives would then cancel out. And that leaves me with a value of x, which is what I want. I want my variable x to be by itself. Then five times negative six is a negative 30, negative 30. And that's gonna conclude that problem, just like that. So in one step, I'm able to solve the equation by multiplying by five and done. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's move on to the next one. That was problem number five, and now we're looking at problem number six. I have one third m equals to six. Here I have a fraction in front of the variable. So my coefficient is a fraction. We can use the multiplicative inverse in order to solve that. What do I mean by multiplicative inverse? Well, simply, I can just say that I'm multiplying by the reciprocal or the flip of the fraction. So one third, if you were to flip that, would be three over one. So I'll be multiplying both sides by three, which is that reciprocal of one third. And it looks like this. Oh, that's, a, that's an ugly three. Let's fix that. There we go, much better. And now, multiplying the right side by three as well, I end up with three times one third m equals to three times six. So we wanna stress that we're doing one step linear equations and this is the one step that I would need to do in this problem. Multiplying by the reciprocal of one third, which is three. Here, my threes will cancel out. So I bring down my one m, all right? So I'll just write it as m, no need for the redundant one. I'll just write it as m by itself. And then three times six is always 18. Yeah, that's it. I don't like that eight. That's a much better eight. So that concludes that problem, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. So I started out with one third m equals to six. The reciprocal or the flip of that is three. So I multiply that to each and every term in my equation. I only had two terms. So I multiply the three times the one third m and I multiply the three times the six. This gives me m equals to 18 and done, ladies and gentlemen, on that problem. Yes, just moving along here. Next problem we have is problem number seven. I have four fifths x equals to negative 16. Well, once again, I have a fraction in front of my variable. I'll just be dividing by four fifths, which ends up turning into multiplication or just simply looking at it as I'm gonna multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So let's check that out. So here, my reciprocal of four fifths is five fourths. So I'll be multiplying both sides of the equation by five fourths, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Just multiplying both sides by five fourths. So on the left side, check out what happens. Everything cancels out. Mm-hmm. Because remember, anytime you have a common factor in the numerator and the denominator, that means that it's one because anything over itself is one. So you can just cancel that out and you'll end up with one X. And once again, I don't write the one in front of my variable because it's unnecessary. It's not simplified if it's there. So we'll just write it as X. Then on the right side, we can simplify before we multiply, and that's what I prefer to do. So I'll say that four goes into itself once, it'll go into 16 four times, and so we'll be multiplying five times negative four to give me negative 20 as my result, and that's my answer. So in one step, ladies and gentlemen, we were able to solve this problem by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of four-fifths, which is five-fourths, and that is the end of the problem, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So that being the case, let's move on to problem number eight. Okay. In problem number eight, you see the same thing here, right? We have negative three-fifths K equals to nine-tenths. So I definitely wanted to give you guys an example to say, hey, this is what happens when you see a fraction on either side of the problem. We can, once again, multiply by the reciprocal of the negative three-fifths, or in this case, the coefficient of negative three-fifths. So that being the case, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative five-thirds. 
That's right. Multiplying both sides by negative 5 thirds. That is the flip of the fraction, that reciprocal. That's what I wanted to use. All right. Here we are. Okay, so as you see here, ladies and gentlemen, or kind of see over there because the handwriting is not that great, uh, we can go ahead and cancel out everything on the left-hand side because, once again, a negative times a negative being a positive, and when that's exactly what I want, the values of 3 and 5, they'll cancel out as you simplify the fractions and multiply that 5 thirds times 3 fifths. Remember that when you're multiplying by a reciprocal, that multiplicative inverse, you'll end up with 1 every time. So because I'm multiplying 5 thirds times 3 fifths, that ends up giving me 15 over 15, which is 1. So that's what I need to isolate my variable. I want that 1k by itself. Then on the right side, let's simplify before we multiply. I'll be saying that 3 goes to itself once. It'll go into 9 three times. I know that 5 goes into itself once. It goes into 10 twice. So now multiplying straight across, a negative times a positive is a negative. So I have my negative waiting there. And multiplying my numerator, 1 times 3 gives me 3. Uh-oh. 3. And 1 times 2 is 2. So I'll leave my answer as an improper fraction, and that gives me negative 3 halves. So that's my result right there, ladies and gentlemen. So we multiply both sides by the reciprocal of negative 3 fifths, which is negative 5 thirds. And using the multiplicative identity, all right, that multiplicative inverse, I end up isolating K. And then on the right side, I simplify and multiply to get negative 3 halves, which is my answer. Ladies and gentlemen, this completes this lesson for today. That was solving one-step linear equations with Mr. Witt and Fort Bend Tutoring. Thank you very much. And please get in on our intros and outros by sending in your audio and or your video file to fbt at tutormemath.net, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Witt. Bye-bye. Okay. I get it. You get it? You didn't do well last nah, semester. maybe a D. Now you need F. some help. Please. You came to the right place. Help me. Fort Bend Tutoring. Math made easy. Wow.